Perto? 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 Perto?
గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ హుంబె సార్ హుంబె సార్ హలో ఆవాజ్ సార్ ఆవాజ్ ఆవాజ్ అంబర్ సార్ ఏతోనా ఆశోక్ సార్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ సురు కరాల పైజే సురు కరు ఎక్ దోన్ మిట వీస్ వీస్ అలిక్ కర్ ఎక్ ఎక్ దోన్ ఎక్ ఓమే దే పక్క ఎక్ దోన్ మిట కర్ సో గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ దిస్ డాక్టర్ అశోక్ వి హుంబే హీ హ్యాస్ కంప్లీట్ సీన్ ఎలక్ట్రానిక్స్ ఫ్రమ్ గర్వారి కాలేజ్ పుణే అండ్ పిహెచ్డి ఫ్రమ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫిజిక్స్ డాక్టర్ బాబా సాహెబ్ అంబేద్కర్ మాట్లాడ యూనివర్సిటీ ఔరంగాబాద్ అండ్ నా హీ ఈస్ వర్కింగ్ ఇన్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఎలక్ట్రానిక్స్ డాక్టర్ బాబా సాహెబ్ అంబేద్కర్ మాట్లాడ యూనివర్సిటీ ఔరంగాబాద్ యాజ్ అన్ అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ so today he will, he will go uh, going he is going to do on uh, various applications of the uh, nano materials in the uh, diverse diverse area of the uh, nano technology so uh, and uh, with this sir uh, dr ashok khumbe sir please sir khumbe sir uh you can start sir good morning sir good morning good morning everyone thank you dr prashant kharat sir for your nice introduction now straight away i will jump into my presentation
that is of So I'm very much grateful to the convener of this CV Raman lecture series, Dr. Prashant B. Kharat, sir. I also express my sincere gratitude to organizer, the principal of Vinayak Vidyan Mahavidyale, Dr. Alka Bhisamam and other colleagues, coordinator, organizing secretary of the CV Raman lecture series for BSc students. So by keeping in mind the audience that they are of BSc students, I have prepared this particular presentation so that they will be enhancing their interest in this field by knowing the recent development in this particular sector. So at the very first, I welcome you all. As Dr. Kharat sir introduced, so I will be skipping this particular slide. So these are the, some of the snapshots you, which you can have for the my institution. Now the topic for or the title of this presentation is sustainable nanomaterials for diverse applications. Having been now already gone through some nanomaterials, most of them were in the yesterday's session by my friend Dr. Pankaj Khirade, where you have come across different nanomaterials. Now my job is to take you through different kinds of applications. No doubt some of the uh, parts or some of the slides will get overlap with the yesterday's presentation, but I'm very much thankful to Dr. Khirade for uh, striving you through these different areas, right from synthesis, to certain applications of nanomaterials so that my uh, path has been already built. Now I have to just explore you all to different applications. That is what the diverse applications I may speak. Obviously, it would be having a outline in which you will come across some nanomaterials and the classification. I'm, I'm trying to put some other parts which haven't or which have rarely covered in previous sessions. There are some properties, particularly only two properties, synthesis and characterizations, and obviously the area of this particular, uh, area of interest of this particular session, that is its diverse applications. Now, summary, and then obviously I will be acknowledging so very first, you will be having a question that you will always wonder or you always try to imagine something just by seeing the title or whenever you try to at, uh, attain some of the series or some of the lectures. So where does your imagination take you? This is the right or the appropriate time to ask this question to yourself, particularly by each of the student. So what, what you have already imagined about this particular session, right? That is where does your imagination take you? Since it, containing, it contains the word nanomaterials, particularly nano world, so it will be having a small idea and big impact. But that is through the point of view of nanomaterials being converted into a kind of technology that becomes nanotechnology. So at this moment, another question you will be asking that is nanotechnology will be the gateway for the future human beings, obviously on this planet, 
that is on earth so small ideas making big impacts that would be the another question you can consider and this is the part where this might be overlapping with previous uh, slightly uh, hardly one or two slides so already you know that there is a plenty room of the uh, plenty or uh, there is a plenty of room at the bottom said by the great richard feynman so obviously you know the rest of the theory where and when now he was the first personality to give the word that is about the nano world now whether this will be exist or not that has been realized by professor norio taniguchi so who first time coined the term called nanotechnology so he was really fond of converting this particular world into a technology that would be cons considered as nanotechnology so th this would be a kind of book you can consider where you will be finding out some interesting aspects another man dr eric drexler so who was believing in thinking about nanotechnology today so what's most important is understanding where it leads what nanotechnology will like after we reach assembler breakthrough so this is the break actual breakthrough of this particular world which he has given an idea of molecular machinery manufacturing and computation in 1980s now see 1959 1974 and 1980s so another very good book called nano systems by drexler which will be telling you about molecular machinery manufacturing and obviously the last part that is computation so that you can always go for further improvements so these these are the three things you can always consider in the in the path of emergence of nanotechnology or right right from the beginning of the coining the word nano to a sort of technology today we do have now again it is a necessity of the time that you should go through these comparisons so obviously at this moment you will be asking a question how big is a nanometer so right now or till this moment you have gone through these three different terms macro micro and nano so see here i have kept the same example there is a flat surface on which there is a curved surface that is particularly a sphere so here you can see a sphere here you can see a sphere so surface of this sphere and this sphere is touching to a surface of the flat sphere in both these examples and then if you see the interface of these two surfaces then what you would be imagine so you will be imagine these things that would be the micro in this particular case here it will be uh, uh, this is macro this is the micro and the last thing which is the part of interest of this session that is nano so here here you can consider the uh, nano and probably here you are going for the atomic so this is atomic arrangement you can consider right so without going into much details of this i have just uh, explored you through this uh, nanotechnology so it is nothing but understanding and control of the matter at a very small dimensions roughly it varies from 1 to 100 nanometers now another question about which we can think and it is nothing but is the world nano exist only after 1959 particularly 25th of december 1959 the answer is no already there had been the, the existence of nano in the environment so around us and these are the classic examples which we can consider of the existence of nano so viruses then what is making the most colorful the butterflies then there would be lotus effects so where on which you know hydrophobic effect with a self cleaning ability which will be having some micro and nanoscopic architectures on the surface 
another beautiful example feeder of peacock and obviously in, in the marine life that is the coral so these were some of the other examples which are already exist before coining the word nano or giving uh, this particular term in 1959 now how nano particles or nano materials will occur so obviously there would be one way natural occurring so here you can see different things and in this the very first one is see here you can see the fine dust and the sand particles so it, this would be by degradation you can consider another example is volcanic ash in this one and obviously another one is the viruses and then later on the counterpart of this that would be man made if this is natural then what about man made so man made nano materials so again here now see some of the nano materials which are desired some are uh, undesired right at all you are not interested in them but still they are being emerged it, uh, to the environment so engine smokes you can consider or factory smoking burning right factory smoke burning and the most important thing that is engineered nanoparticles so so see here the engineering of these particular particles that is called engineered nano materials and this is what uh, we are going to extract for applications in so many different applications since we have gone through the different things or their occurrences let's quickly go through their classification so that you would be very easily judging their properties and then ultimately you will be implementing them to the suitable applications so very first one is clusters so here you can see the zero dimensions first category second one is tubes or fibers or rods which are ultimately called single dimension one dimensional then films or some of the coatings which are two dimensionals and the last one you can consider the polycrystals which are of three dimensionals so what would be the example of each of these so that you can simply understand what it is so here you can have solid nanoparticles hollow nanoparticles quantum dots you can consider in this that would be the uh, zero dimensional particularly the quantum dots right then second one is nano rods nano fibers carbon nano tubes or simply you can consider nano tubes and nano wires example of this there will be the films there will be a pattern structure there will be some sort of coatings and the last one this kind of composite which is three dimensional and again the polycrystals so you can see in a in a single cube so many different kinds of uh crystals hence it becomes polycrystals so this is the classification of the nano materials in which we are highly interested now only two properties we will be considering that is the surface area and this is the classic example that how you can understand the importance of so large surface area of the nano materials so there might be so many different questions that how it would be so large so this would be a case you can consider so simply you will be having a, a cube whose square uh, whose surface area is around only 6 cm square if you have so many such kind of cubes uh, composing such a single cube and then if you separate it out them then obviously uh if you if you further measure or count these cubes and measure their surface area then it will get multiply and therefore now 6 has get converted to 60 and obviously if you further go down or if you have so tiny compositions of this kind of cube right as you can see the spreading nearby this cube then obviously you are going to have huge surface area so 
This is the first property. No doubt there are so many different properties, but as far as the applications which we are considering, I'm just uh, considering the minimum amount of uh, minimum adequate properties we can consider in the applications. Second one is the surface energy. So how along with the surface area, the surface energy go on increase and which is playing very, very key role, particularly in, in the applications such as catalytic applications, sensing applications, uh, convert the, the energy conversion application, applications. So, so as surface energy increases, obviously the surface area has been increased that we have witnessed. And now another point you can consider that is the increase in the band gap. So you can consider for different materials. So how much would be the band gap in a material, a bulk material, then how it is changing into the micro uh, parts of the same material. And then what about nano? So here you can have bulk nano and bulk micro nano. So that would be the part you can consider. And then obviously nowadays people have reached to the atomic size. So huge band gap you can find. So see, it is nothing but the function of decrease in the size. Forget about the, this particular word cluster. So here, since now you have gone to a reach to a atomic level. So we'll, we'll simply consider the decrease in size. So decrease in size will be always lead the huge increase in the band gap and surface energy along with the surface area we can consider. So only these two properties, but apart from these, there are so many other properties. In yesterday's session also you have considered optical properties, magnetic properties, electrical properties, right? some other uh, properties specific to certain applications. And if you know these things, then you are going to feature or you will be reading some sort of salient features of such nanomaterials. So what are these? So again, there will be overlapping. So high surface area, increase in the perfections, increased imperfections that are called defects. So not every defect is bad. So sometimes some of the effects are expected. Then high surface to volume ratio, I think very nicely, Dr. Kira, they have emphasized this particular point. Quantum confinement, as, as we have considered in the very first classification, that is the quantum dot, large surface energy, just we have gone through. And obviously recovery is another important factor we can consider. So these are again, some of the factors which are called salient features of the nanomaterials. Now the next question comes in that, how would you synthesize these materials? So again, in which sort of material, whether nanoparticle, whether nanotube, nanorod, nanofiber, nanoflex, nanoflowers, nanotubes, it depends on the interest as well as the method of synthesis. So what sort of method of synthesis you are going to use? So I have just put this particular slide because again, most of the methods have already elaborated or emphasized by the previous speak. So this would be the case you can consider in the synthesis. But another purpose of putting this slide here that always keep in mind the engineered nanomaterials. That is the reason we have considered the naturally available or naturally occurred and man-made nanomaterials that to be again desired and undesired. Right? So we are highly uh, interested in the engineered nanomaterials. So only that sort of synthesis you can carry out or you should carry out. Another most important point here is once you synthesize them, you need to always examine them. Whether really you have synthesized whatever you are interested. Neither So this sort of uh, jumbling should not be there. And therefore, the examinations are necessary and technically it is called characterizations. No doubt some measurements will be involved in this. Again, there are different kinds of characterizations you can carry out. So specifically 
I will just uh, uh, state spectroscopy and microscopy. Again, there will be the endless tools available in the spectroscopy as well as in the microscopy. Now, since I have just put here the spectroscopy and microscopy, some other uh, some tools in this are considered, say, X-ray diffraction, XPS, that is called X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, UV, FTIR. See, nowadays, uh, surrounding you, you will be finding out these, these sort of instruments. Then electron microscopy, tunneling microscopy, right? uh, particularly scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy. So these are the tools. So what sort of information these tools will give you? So the spectroscopy will be giving you uh, the internal structure that is of the crystal energy. So here you can see this is, this is the instrument you can uh, consider. This would be the, its, its working principle and obviously what kind of result it will be generating. So these three things you can consider. Another way, very sophisticated tool, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, its working principle and what sort of result it will give you and what kind of information you will be extracting by these particular results. And obviously you will be observing out something extraordinary so that you will be implementing your material. Another aspect that is the microscopy. So what this, this is called scanning electron microscopy. And this is the instrument for called transmission electron microscopy, very costly instrument, always cost in crores. Then what sort of information it will give you? So it will be giving you surface topography, it will give you morphology, it will be giving you composition, same can be done with this, apart from the crystalline structure, the right? only thing is that their resolutions are different. Right? So here you can see the sort of results and again the results you can uh, get respectively by these uh, sort of microscopies. Now once you have different kinds of observations or measurements or characterizations, so you will be thinking about the results. If results are in your favor, then no doubt your path is already decided. You will be going in, in that particular way. If results are not as you expect, unexpectedly you get something extraordinary. No, that doesn't mean every time you will be fail, uh, failing in it. Right? So probably you might be having some extra, uh, uh, some exceptional uh, results. So again, you need to be prepared for that particular thing. And that's where now you come, that is the applications. So, so many different applications you can consider. So there are a huge number of applications. Some of the applications already you have considered. I, I uh, try to omit that particular applications. So just, I listed here four different uh, categories biomedical applications, industrial applications, environmental applications, and agriculture. My topic will be uh, emphasizing or my this particular presentation will be emphasizing most of this most of the points of this particular field that is related to the agriculture. Recently, I started working in uh, this particular field. No doubt there are some uh, some sort of good kind, uh, some sort of Examples, I think Dr. Karat himself had worked in this particular area that is particularly for drug delivery or some uh, anti-aging oxidants or uh, antibacterial sort of applications of nanomaterials. Industrial applications, no doubt, for example, radars, microwaves or some sort of uh, micro devices. So nowadays, you know, your, your cell phone is having a very tiny antenna. So it doesn't mean that it has no antenna, it has antenna, but you cannot see it nowadays by naked eyes. So this is the classic example of, again, the implementation of nano tools or the nanotechnology or these kinds of materials. And no doubt in the environment, very important application you can consider that is the uh, water purification. So whatever the water purification is being done. So there you can consider the use of I will say rather unavoidable use of these kinds of materials. 
So that is what environment. So I will be focusing this one that is related to the agriculture. Now you need to understand the importance of agriculture through the uh, point of view of India. So in this field, now as far as India's agriculture sector is concerning, which is changing the socio-economic environments of the population due to globalization and liberal, uh, liberalization. So these are the two factors which are responsible in changing the socio-economic environments. And obviously this field is also getting affected by these two things that is liberalization and globalization. Mostly nowadays, the globalization you can consider. So more than 75% people are living in rural areas and they are still completely depend on the field of agriculture. So agriculture must, must continue to play its major role in Indian economy. And in, in, this, uh, in this lockdown uh, phase, most of you must have come across about uh, how the Indian economy is being supported by the sector of agriculture. So, which is providing about 65% of livelihood. I'm talking about agriculture sector. So it itself is providing about 65% of livelihood. It is further uh, accounting 27% of GDP of India. Then another point you can consider, it is contributing 20% of the total exports, whatever we are exporting to other countries. And further, it is supplying huge amount of raw materials to the industries, not only in India, but also uh, this, in this particular heads, that is export. So its growth rate in the production is about 5.7, and which is uh, huge, we can admit it as. So how much food grain production we do have? So around 212 metric ton. So this much huge food grains productions we do have. So this is the particular thing you can consider. So now question is that even though we have this much huge amount of food grain production, will it be sufficient? So this is a question we, we can uh, ask at this particular point. So there are certain issues which are related to the agriculture sector. So if we just consider 2050, so what would be the Indian population? So it will be obviously to a certain uh, figure. I, I, this is just, just to quote uh, some number, but it would be whatever, to, uh, it, it would be greater than whatever today we do have. And obviously, the demand of calorie will definitely increase, but how much it will be increasing if it is this amount of rice, then it would be increased by 60%. So why we have considered 2050? So obviously we'll, we'll be looking for the future, but at this moment, I will tell you what has happened in 1951 and then in 2001, and now uh, we are thinking that is about 2050. You know, in 1951 and in, in 2001, so this is uh, the sort of analysis available. So where 90% of the agriculture land has been declined. So this is a declining per capita availability of land. So around 90% of land, so in 2000, per capita, you can consider. Right. So around 90% have been split. No. So there are some other reasons we can consider. So there had been rapid urbanization. There is huge rise in the industrial belts. So you must be hearing about different corridors, industrial corridors. So that is what you can consider industrial belts. There had been some uh, soil erosions, huge problem you can consider. And obviously this is uh, another problem that is climate change. 
So altogether, as an effect of all these things, this 90% declining is absurd. And obviously, in, in, in the same way or with the same rate, if we go, then it would reach in 2050. And then how we will be able to manage the demand of the calories by this huge amount of population in 2050. And because of this, today itself, we need to find out a sort of solution. So there is urgent need. Some one other challenges which we can consider before agriculture sector, particularly in India. And this is the situation uh, all over the world. So this is not only for India, but since uh, we can consider uh, our own country, but by and large, you can consider or you, you can find out some sort of uh, problems. So very small and fragmented land holdings. This is Angit Leki Shambhar Chidhai Karazali. We never know what, what is going to happen. So small and fragmented land holdings is the first challenge we can consider. But as I don't know what to do with one or two acres, but I don't know what to do with one or two acres. So this would be the first thing. Another severe issue you can or challenge you can consider whatever we are getting whether it is healthy or not healthy and safe food another burning issue there is always increase in the risk of disease whatever we are intaking karan apan sagli kade ji khata vagare vapart so every time we are risking ourselves by increase in uh, uh, to to increase the crop products by increasing the doses. Then there are some threats to agricultural production. Kadi tari tsunami ete, kadi tari chakravada ete, kadi tari aukadi paus ete. So different kinds of threats you can consider to the products. Bioeconomy, another point you can consider. Fertilizers or biocides qualities. Not only this, again, jekai bb ane gheto, so, you know, Dubar Per Nihar Shizal. So, these are the, some of the issues we can consider. That is about the quality. So, it is not only about the particular uh, on field. Apart from the farm, there are some other factors we can consider. Soil erosion. So, obviously, this is going to happen. Ultimately, there will be uh, uh, some sort of this particular problem. Napiki Yushak. Rather, this is witnessed. Scarcity of capital. Huge uh, problem for certain areas. Scarcity of capital. So usually we hear this sort of thinking. Inadequate shortage facilities. So obviously, Tutpunja uh, Jakai facilities. Right? So so such kind of different inadequacy in the facilities. Same kind of thing that is inadequate transport you can consider. But you know, its quality will get hamper that is inadequate transport and therefore there is a urgent need right immediate need to develop a sort of sustainable development in this particular sector that is in the field of agriculture so what are field that is nanomaterials field contribute so that at least some sort of these issues will be uh, solved or will be addressed and these challenges will get reduced. So this is what we can consider. So how you are going to apply the nanomaterials in the field of agriculture, so applications of nanomaterials in agriculture. So very first thing, you can use them in order to improve the crop so crop improvement so you can see right from seeding to uh, 
let's say uh, the crop products and till the cultivation so you can consider and you can use there this particular sort of technology so for crop improvement crop protection by the by the fungal bacteria some sort of other viruses right so uh, you know kapus kapus aur tumcha bondali padte jawari jawari asel maka asel te kadala lagla ni tyachat atmade ekadi ali janma ghete so ya sagya gosti you have to always address so nano pesticides you can go for the crop protection precision farming you have to be very precise and obviously that would be through the eyes or watch of sensors which are called nano sensors and nowadays this particular field is being uh, uh, hugely uh, or rapidly increasing stress tolerance so you know there will be drought conditions or you need to again consider some sort of salinity so that would be the stress tolerance that would be another point soil enhancement so whatever the problem soil erosion or jese ki napiki wagaira sarkya gosti apan bagitle so how you can improve their quality tyachat enhancement kashi karta yil so soil enhancement again for that particular purpose you can use the nano materials and make that soil healthy so you can uh, uh reduce the degradation of that particular soil by uh, introducing some sort of nano materials and crop growth so this is another this uh, this is the uh, field which is of hot emergence so where you can have uh, controlled growth of the crops and obviously that will be leading you to a good sort of crop yield so these are the different things you can always consider where the nano materials can be applied or the applications of nano materials in agriculture now different fragmentations we can consider how you can use these nano materials as nano fertilizers so you know npks so as far as the soil is concerned you need to always examine the percentage of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so you know without skeleton we cannot exist likewise for the soil this particular uh, these three elements are very necessary so which are called the fertilizers so nitrogen potassium phosphorus magnesium no doubt some other elements you are going to consider so how you can use these materials or the nano materials as a nano fertilizers so through the point of view of say here you can see through the point of your pesticides right so what this will be doing it so it will be suppressing the diseases of the crops that will definitely maximize the health and it will be reducing the pathogens on that particular crop it will protect the tissue infection and the production of secondary metabolites and you will be having improved crop yield so these metabolites are generated by some enzymes which will initiate micronutrient cofactors and therefore now you have a healthy safe and the enhanced crop yield so shortly you can use them as nano fertilizers now since i have touched this i will just rapidly go go through this particular point so how this is being released into uh, the let's say for the improvement or for the uh, crop yield that is what the nanoparticles for uh, for fertilizer release that is what different techniques you can consider so you can uh, encapsulate that would be called as nano nutrient inside the nano materials such as tubes or nano porous materials some some sort of structure you can have then second one these nutrients further can be coated with a some thin polymer films so here a sort of not exactly like this but uh, here you can see now you have incorporated or coated some sort of uh, nutrients fine and then another 
category or the third category you can consider that where the nutrients can be directly delivered as the particles or emulsions at very small dimensions you can consider like this so what sort of mechanism these these will be having so mechanism of fertilizer release so whenever they will enter inside the the cell or that particular targeted area they what kind of uh, tasks or the functions they will perform so that is what the mechanism so let's understand this with an with the help of an example so the, uh, in a in a standard medium you have uh, uh, sowed a seed of say tomato so tomato seed germination right ek komdi cha pillu nahi hai though it looks like that so this is in the standard medium now what would happen if you could have assisted this particular medium by the uh, carbon nanotube or the sort of nano material we are going to consider so see here how good the seed germination had been happened within the same so, uh, same time duration so this is without the assistance or association of nano material particularly this is by the example of carbon nanotube and this is with the help of the uh, carbon nanotube right so this is a kind of mechanism you can consider further it is being used to uh, protect the plants by uh, different things so from the pest from pathogens obviously these are the some of the weeds see uh, some uh, sometime weeds needs to be cured right so not every time weeds should be uh, let's say unwanted though they are uh, undesired but sometimes we we uh, try to keep them or make them survive so another point nano materials as nano pesticides so some of the pesticidal properties you need to consider so these are nothing but the crystallinity its, its stiffness permeability its biodegradability it is very important otherwise you know nano is though it is a very fa uh, fancy thing right so it was not uh, it, it is not a case that it will be giving only very 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 good kind of effects no there would be some adverse effects right if you if whatever the material you you are going to use if it is not degradable then it would cause severe or serious issues and that will definitely give birth to another challenges ajun aap adhi aap lekad kay kami hai tanki right so you will be always considering about this biodegradability obviously this has already concern affinity towards target so where you want it to have that is what the targeted uh, drug delivery sort of thing right so affinity to us so how you will be having the formulations of these pesticides so already we have considered different kinds of classifications so here you will be having nanoparticles here you can have nano capsulation so that you can go and hit the target right then there will be nano emulsions so, so these are the techniques by which you can have the formulation of pesticides and another one is the nano suspension see every other day here you will be finding out some improvements and this is true that every other day you will be always finding out some modified ways in this so that doesn't mean that only these four techniques or these four uh, ways will be available no you can improve and obviously you know uh, as per the uh, the 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 area gate change so some sort of changes you have to always consider right even with the weather change you have to always take care about some modifications so this is the mode of action how they will be so whenever they get enter into it then how it is being so once it get enter into it then how it is going to affect so whether the unwanted cells you wanted to kill whether it is killing it or not that would be the another point you will be always considered so that is what its action of mode so mode of action now see here if you have only one and further you have incorporated some uh, uh, another materials which are of 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 likely of the same properties so that will give you enhanced results so it will become nano carrier system that will definitely improve its dispersion as well as its bio availability over the surfaces of the leaves and that will definitely uh, improve the quality of that particular crop 
Further, if you have the modifications in this, see here you can see all are of same category. Here you can see uh, some sort of modifications. So further, it will help to improve as well as spread uh, over the leaves. So it's addition right, through the droplets on the leaves will be always improved. So this is the schematic mode of action of these materials with its size reduction. So instead of only considering single, if you could go as much as small, so you will be having these improved things. There are some other examples uh, where actually you will be coming across these nanoparticles, which will be, which can be used as the protectants. So there would be silver nanoparticles, copper, copper uh, nanoparticles, I can say uh, nanostructures, gold nanostructures, titanium dioxide nanostructures, some sort of polymers are nowadays being uh, extracted in this field. And that will definitely give you uh, the different sort of activities. So here you can consider activities for insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, right? How they, their interaction with uh, these another parts of uh, different, uh, let's say, functions. So there you can use these and that, that will definitely protecting the paste. So whatever the bacteria, fungi, insects, viruses, this will say Tata bye bye to these. And obviously here you will be having a, a good result. So this will benefit into the shelf life, site specific uptake, solubility. Right? There are some uh, another points right, which are, uh, which needs to consider. Right? So that is nothing but the toxicity. Right? Another example, apart from uh, say, uh, different, let's say, nanomaterials. So here you can consider the silver nanoparticles, right? I will just uh, rush through this. Another one you can consider nano copper, right? So uh, nanostructures of copper that will again give you the enhanced results. Same for the zinc. You, here you can further have uh, improvement in this. Silicon. You can consider, this, these are the, some of the examples, what sort of uh, materials you are considering. So titanium dioxide, right? You know, here I will tell you one thing. So most of you must have observed this one. So it always enhances the photosynthetic activity. So synthesis, photosynthesis. And suppose and still you want it to uh, you wanted it to grow normally so what what sort of uh, fixation you can do so you can provide this kind of doses so that you will be having a normal growth of your plant then uh, carbons particularly carbon uh, nanostructures of carbons gold right so again here another point you can consider the uh, antioxidant uh, properties, anti-aging properties. Right? So that would be a point you can always consider. Another application that is how you can use these as nano sensors. So you know the nano sensors are useful tools to analyze the molecules from the bioreceptor in this particular field. So whenever you will be coming across this you need to consider nano sensors uh, which use to determine the time of the crop harvest. So where you will be utilizing them or where you will be requiring them. So at the time of crop harvest, kadi crop harvesting karai What sort of crop health is? Then what, in, in order to determine the microbial as well as the chemical contaminations of a crop. Further to diagnose diseases, caused by some infections that may be through soil microorganisms, viruses, bacteria, fungi, right? in order to uh, measure the oxygen consumption uh, in, the, in the process of respiration by your plants. So for all these things, you can use the nanosensors. And these nanosensors can be made up of these sort of nanomaterials. Soil fertility, another problem. So we always wanted to improve 
soil quality so nanoparticles which are uh, nanoparticles are prevent uh, are, are preventing fixation of the nutrient ions in the in the soil further they are uh, um, freely uh, they, they prevent freely movement nutrients and as a result it will contribute in the enhancement in the efficiency of the crops so soil fertility can be improved so just to summarize that we we are at the end of this particular session so just to summarize only three things the very first one you can consider these nanomaterials so what would be this one you know what is it what would uh, as as a size and what would be its shape another point is what about their chemical compositions so how you can consider their synthesis right? and another point what sort of interactions these will be having so very first one there will be a foliar entry there will be the root entry and there will be the plant tissue culture so these are the three different ways you can consider through which you can uh, accomplish uh, the um, particular interest and what sort of applications you will be having so obviously there will be bio nano biosensors delivery systems and genetic engineering so altogether engineering of the nano materials will definitely lead if these materials possess the qualities which you can extract or uh, implement for such sort of applications right so as far as this session is concerned this is all from this side now at this moment and on the on the previous day of the national science day i would be leaving you to a science so make a career in this and explore the possibilities of the science so that we can contribute to the human kind so i wish every one of you the national science day which is being celebrated in fact uh, in in most of the institutes it is being celebrated today right though it is on 20th of february which we always uh, on, on this day which we, uh, we we always commemorate the discovery of the raman effect right by the great nobel laureate sir c v raman right so i wish every one of you a uh, happy national science day at this moment i acknowledge my mentor the senior professor dr k m jadhav at department of physics dr baba saheb ambedkar maratwara university aurangabad for molding me to from nowhere to this particular uh, stage i am also thankful to head of my institute that is uh, department uh, that is at department of electronics at dr baba saheb ambedkar maratwara university aurangabad i am very much grateful to my friend dr balaji moik who has uh, contributed a lot while preparing these slides so i'm i'm indebted to dr moik and at the last but not least i am uh, i sincerely express my gratitude to all the organizers of this particular lecture series to fostering and scattering the developments happening in the field of science as well as for offering me an opportunity to present or to contribute some sort of uh, things through the way of this lecture series at the last i wish to thank you every one of you so now it's over to you if you have any sort of queries you may put forward i will try at my best so dr kharat sir now uh, th thank you sir uh, now session is open question answer students can make uh, unmute to them and ask two questions to dr humbe sir there corona ke question asen to sarana vichar sakta ata uh thank you sir
uh, since uh, no no question you, from the student uh, i i would like to invite uh, my colleague for the vote of uh, Dr. Uh, professor ambore sir for the vote of thanks गुड आफ्टरनून अंबर सर यस सर आवाज येतोय माझा येतोय सर येतोय सर येतोय सर हम्म हॅलो गुड आफ्टरनून एव्हरी वन आय एम अजय अंबोरे अँड आय एम हिअर टू प्रेझेंट दी वोट ऑफ थँक्स फॉर टुडेज लेक्चर ऑफ दिस सर सी व्ही रमन लेक्चर सिरीज i would like to thank our guest speaker dr ashok humbe sir for enlighten us with his profound knowledge his lecture was full of knowledge and interesting things it has given a deep insight into the topic and also revealed some interesting facts the point where dr ashok humbe sir told us about the applications of nanotechnology was very informative i am pretty sure that this precious knowledge of dr humbe sir will definitely help our students for their bright future thank you sir once again i would like to thank you sir for giving his valuable time from his extremely busy schedule and i am also thank you to all of our students and listener for paying their attention and learning well i would like to say that tomorrow's lecture will be conducted by dr dhammajot gaikwad uh. sir it's uh, not on, not on tomorrow sir it's uh, it's been on monday uh, 29th yes. Uh, yes 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 correct tomorrow, to, uh, tomorrow is a sunday you are taking it off and on monday the lecture will be conducted by dr dhammajot gaikwad sir assistant professor department of physics arts commerce and science college dharanga district jalgaon he is going to tell us about the learning of physics through the innovative ideas well i here here i declare that the today's session is concluded thank you and we will continue the same at monday monday that is 1st of march 1st of march yes okay, okay. yes okay thank, thank you, you thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you karat sir thank you humbe sir okay yeah, thank yeah. you thank you